What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out the demo for 10 minutes till dawn, which is actually the demo for 20 minutes till dawn. They swapped the name up since this one's supposed to be kind of a taster teaser prologue for the game. Uh, this game is very much in the wheelhouse of vampire survivors. Very, very similar. This is a horde survival roguelike where you are a red-caped gunslinger that's attempting to survive 10 minutes until the dawn arrives, while all kinds of Lovecraftian-inspired monsters are trying to reduce you down to a fine paste. You guys will know that I'm a fan of this, and in fact, I think there is an important philosophical discussion to be had right now about the influential nature of vampire survivors in that since its release, I've been made privy to about four or five games that are incredible incredibly similar that are coming out soon that are all barking up that same tree. Now, whether a lot of them were in development prior to Vampire Survivors or before or after, I'm not really entirely too sure, but there's something to be said about the fact that Vampire Survivors right now is sitting at 100,000 positive reviews with a 98% or like 99% positive review on Steam. And at that point, you sort of have to ask yourself a question. Is like all of these games, are they clones? Or at this point, are they taking inspiration from it because it's become so massively successful and influential that it's actually spawned and created its own genre of game? And frankly, I'm here for it. Uh, I don't tend to think of these games as clones. After all, people will know that Vampire Survivors was heavily inspired by a game called Magical, or they're called by, called Magic Survival. And so, anyways. All of these things spawn from one another and move forward, and honestly, I've been really, really enjoying this sort of return to procedural Smash TV-inspired games. Uh, Smash TV is one of my favorite games of all time on the Sega Genesis, and so I've really been having a good time with the Horde survival genre. So anyways, we're going to dive on in today for about, oh, I don't know, this is a pretty short game, so this will probably be a shorter video. 20, 30 minutes in there somewhere, we're going to give our impressions on it, maybe you guys could throw it on your wish list, get you excited for the next thing that it's going to be coming out with this title, but from what I've seen so far, the game looks very, very enjoyable, so let's play. Down below, you'll find a link to this demo. It's freely accessible to anybody that wants to get it, and then on top of that, there'll also be a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream, uh, where you can hang out with me live or pick my brain with any questions you may have had about any of my recent coverage. You're more than welcome to do that. Let's go ahead and play. Uh, there are a number of characters, and we unlock them with metagame currency. I don't have enough metagame currency right now because I'm bad at the game and I got smoked in about three minutes when I was doing my test run to make sure that like all of my recordings and everything were going to be compatible. So we'll start out with Shauna and all we've got is a revolver. Let's go. All right, so the music's starting to throb. We can see little black eyes out in the darkness waiting for us. Let's go ahead and go get them. As with Vampire Survival, whenever you kill a mob, they're going to drop a little moat of XP. I feel like the collection animation and also the sound effect that they've selected are good. Uh, it's satisfying. It sounds all right. I do find that the sound effects are pretty good as well. Uh, the hit feedback on both the player and on enemy mobs uh, is good, in all honesty. I think that's one of the areas where kind of like Nomad Survival and Vampire Survivors and all those kind of games uh, could do a little bit better is just in terms of like the player taking hits could be kind of relayed to the player a little bit better. So we've got the double shot. We fire two shots now, and it gives us one extra projectile. We've got more spread, but our bullet damage goes down. It looks like we've got Holy Shield right here. It protects you from damage one time. It regenerates in two minutes after breaking. We've got our Ghost Friend over here. It's a ghost that follows us and shoots bullets. And then we've got Haste. It makes us move faster and shoot faster. And then Quick Hands, faster fire rate, faster reload. Let's go with the Ghost Friend, I guess. Uh, because the ghost friend doesn't really need to reload, and that's just like piercing damage that's being thrown out there at our enemies. So I think in the early game, I'm just going to focus on getting more damage out there to deal with some of these foes that are going to be rapidly filling up our screen. And in fact, it does seem to be escalating pretty quickly right now. Like, it seems like there's a lot of enemies that are coming for us. I don't know what we did. I don't know if we stole their juice box or what. But they don't seem to be happy with us. I really, really like that level up animation. It looks good. So we got Vitality. We've got some of the things that we already had. Uh, Electro Mage. Every second shot, you'll call down lightning on the enemy. Hell yeah, that's what I want. I I've seen the other options, and I know what I want already. Yeah, that's the stuff right there. And they've given it a little bit of a lighting effect, like a flicker that happens on screen whenever you light off the lightning, too. That's a nice little visual effect. That's the kind of stuff that I tend to look for in video games when trying to decide, like, okay, so, like, does the developer have a good grasp 
of the accompaniment that goes along with the game because obviously like this idea for a game is good it's very fertile territory as of right now but you can't just throw it out there like it's got to have a way to differentiate itself from like competing products effectively uh, we can get energized when lightning strikes an enemy, there's a 20% chance to automatically refill three of your ammo. Okay, so what we're already seeing right here is that they're thinking with synergies in mind. We've already seen things that boost up the damage of our ghost, and now we're seeing something that boosts up or at least changes or modifies our lightning. That's very, very good. What I found with, like, gamers in general, and myself included in that number, is that, like, synergies and things that cross over and are designed with previously acquired abilities in mind, always a very, very good idea. So I'm gonna take that with without even looking at everything else. I don't even care. I mean, we do have every fourth shot we could shoot a fireball. Maybe I'll shoot a fireball every fourth shot. That sounds like fun. There we go. Okay, yeah, that gave him a little bit of the old poof. We got some explodey boys coming after us right now. I don't know if that's going to be enough to level up, but I wanted to go for that pile of XP over there. Uh, we can increase our burn damage. We've got bullets have a 50% chance to inflict burn. We've got holy shield again. We've got electro bug. Summon an electro bug that calls down lightning to strike two enemies. Let's do that. Uh, the enemies are getting kind of thick in their resistance to my killing them. And so, honestly, I'd like to have them taking even more damage wherever possible. And I do feel like we're starting to, to vent quite a lot of alien or whatever the hell these things are. We're starting to vent a lot of their guts out into the atmosphere with all these extra add-ons we have. There's another level up. We've got in sync, so it looks like our ghost friend now shoots towards wherever we're shooting. We've got light weaponry. We summon a magical dagger that seeks out enemies. Okay, all right. It deals as much damage as your bullets, or we can get the burn again. We can get the movement speed. I'm going to take the movement speed on this level up because I do feel sluggish, and I haven't quite been able to make the maneuvers that I want to make previously. Like, I feel like I've been cutting it really, really close when trying to escape the enemy, and so I'd like to be a little bit faster. Never underestimate the advantage that a little bit of spryness and agility can give you. I do like that when you destroy the exploding enemies, their explosion does not only affect the player, it also affects mobs that surround them. That's really, really nice. That adds a level of fairness there. Uh, we've got energized, so lightning strikes have a chance to automatically refill your ammo. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, we are losing a lot of DPS on reloads, and from what I recall from playing, like, The Division, is The Division, I, it had a lot of flaws and it had a lot of problems, but one of the things that I really liked about The Division is that it actively gave you a DPS meter that would adjust based on changes you were making to your weapon. And I remember being shocked how much adjusting my reload time actually shifted my DPS. Like, I never thought about it being that influential, but in fact it was. Uh, we can run and gun, so that'll up our walk speed, quick hands for faster reload, in sync, double shot. Let's go with the double shot, I guess. That sounds good. Okay, I was hoping that maybe the double shock would proc our lightning every single shot, but it doesn't appear to do so. So it actually goes by actual trigger pulls instead of, like, bullets fired. Fair enough. I was trying to be sneaky and slide one past the game. And the game was prepared for me and my ability to identify cheese. It was very, very prepared. Oh, there's a big scary one right there. What does he do? Hold on, let's take him out. So we can get some knockback, we can get some burn damage, we can get blazing speed right here, which allows us to move faster and inflict burn on enemies as we run. I didn't even realize that there was a run versus a walk. Okay, yeah, let's do it. How do I, how do, I do my sprint? I wanted to know how to run. Ow, I got hit right there. I didn't mean to get hit right there. Is that like a boss? Man, he's soaking a lot of damage, dude. He doesn't even care. Dude, we got a long string of reloads right there. That was really, really nice. Okay, let me keep grabbing some XP. Oh, there's a treasure chest down there. Nice. Let's go appraise their treasure chest and see how it stacks up against vampire survivors. Uh, there's a lot of exploders around here. Oh, no, dude. I'm going down. I'm going down. We got to sneak through. We got to sneak through. That's a nice animation. I like it. I mean, honestly, I get tired of the Vampire Survivors animation. The chest can take forever sometimes, so I usually just click through it. I feel like that one has a little bit of fanfare to it, a little bit of confetti. It's got a nice little animated chest that pops up. It's one and done, and it's out of your face in a couple of seconds. So we got in sync for free right there. Very nice. Uh, let's go ahead, and we will take all lightning damage increased by 12 or fire rate. Let's go Lightning Mastery. That sounds good. Make our lightning hit a little bit harder. Oh, cool. We got XP out of the chest, too. Very, very nice. I mean, we are procking a lot of lightning right now. 
And so, like, I, I feel like it was a good acquisition. I, I don't feel ashamed of it. We are clearing the screen now, and before, we definitely were not clearing the screen. And so I think that put us in a better position. I do think we should probably look for ways to increase our damage so that our spread shot becomes a little bit more of an asset. We can get Vitality, which will bring back some health. We've got Vengeful Ghost. He now shoots a try shot. Since we're on our last health, I am tempted by Holy Shield, but I feel like it just doesn't refresh. So in a 10 minute long game, I don't feel like it refreshes. Like that basically only gives us like five free hits. We're only gonna get two out. So I feel like that's one of those things that's better taken early rather or later. Like once the game extends out to 20 minutes, uh, when it's not in the demo, I think that that'll have a lot more use to it. But for right now in a 10 minute game, like five, I, I guess we only have three health and five protections basically artificially doubles our HP if we get it right at the beginning of the game. So maybe I'm looking at it from the wrong perspective. Let's upgrade our ghost, I think. Oh, that raises our bullet damage. That's what I was actually just looking for. I didn't realize that we got a damage boost out of that. So instead of every bullet doing 12 now, it's doing 15. Very nice. We're still not at the point where we're one-shotting monsters. And there doesn't seem to be a huge variety of enemy varieties. Uh, I would definitely in the final version work on that. There should be a lot of like mobs that sort of force you to fiddle with your meta effectively without tanking your run and I know that's a delicate walk that I'm asking the developer to do but that's really kind of the sweet spot is that like coming up with enemy varieties that basically force you to change up your movement patterns or change up your tactics but do not negate big chunks of your build like that's that's really the magic in making a game like this work but honestly I feel like they've got the bits and pieces in the right part right now uh, we can make our a splinter enemies explode into five bullets when killed yeah, all right. Yeah, let's put some uh, let's put some mayhem on screen. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I can feel the power creep. I can feel it coming from my gun tonight. Oh lord. You got. I forgot to do the drum solo. Oh, what is that thing? Oh god. Okay. All right. It's like an angry My Little Pony, dude. It's so furiously angry with me. Is it dead yet? Please die. Oh, it went outside the boundaries. I'm jealous. I can't do that. He's got superpowers that I can't emulate. I'm kind of on the fence about whether or not a dodge roll would make this game better, too. I'm a big fan of dodge rolls, man. I can't help it. I like dodge rolls. Dodge rolls always make games feel more... Oh, no, dude. My butt cheek. It's been cloven. I thought I dodged that one. Look at him. He's over there looking all smug. Did you see the look on his face after he... Dude, after he absolutely bottled me, did you see that look on his face? Aw, oh, insult to injury, dude. My heart is broken. We can afford to unlock something. So we can get a new... Actually, we can get two new things. We can unlock diamond. Yeah, let's get diamond. There we go. All right, so we've got diamond, and it looks like each character has their own sprite. It looks like we can get a shotgun, too. Yeah, let's get a shotgun. Yeah, we'll roll a shotgun on this run. I want to see some variety. Let's get it. So we have, oh yeah, dude, that thing actually, okay, how hard does it hit, though? Oh, good, it registers all the bullets. One of my one of my annoyances with shotguns in video games, especially in 2D games, is when the enemies get a brief iframe after they get hit. So, like, the pellets from a shotgun can only hit once, even though you've got, like, seven of them. I like that the game registers all the pellets, regardless. Like, the enemies don't get any kind of, like, magic shield for, like, a microsecond after getting hit. That's a really, really nice little detail that I think the game did right. Uh, we can get Pyro Mage every fourth shot. We've got Rapid Fire. I feel like focusing maybe on... I'm going to take Lightning again. We did get Shield really early right there, and it is tempting to take because it would have saved us on that last run. But, you know, you guys know my beliefs in life. I believe that it gets the entire mag if it needs to be killed, and, like, the best defense is offense. Like, the enemy can't kill you if you're killing them faster than they can engage, you know what I mean? So I tend to err on the side of, like, murderousness. Uh, I will take, I think, quick hands so that we reload faster. Our gun does need to reload pretty frequently. And so I do think that a little bit of time and a little bit of resources invested into maybe, like, having our reload time uh, will probably help out a lot. Shotgun seems to be okay, though. It's really going to come down to, like, I feel like maybe this would benefit from burn, maybe. Like, I don't really know what to put in the shotgun, but the idea of incendiary shells is intensely sexy to me. Uh, I'm just going to keep backing up real quick. We do have a nice little pile of XP right there, so we can get an extra projectile spread plus 15 bullet damage down. Armed and ready, that's more reload, and it increases your max ammo. 
Ooh, four shots per? Yeah, okay. All right. Yep, now you're speaking my language, dude. We no longer have the double barrel. We have the quad barrel! Yes, quad barrel. Take me home tonight. All right, so after the quad barrel... Let's go ahead and get the magic dagger, since I don't think we took that last game. And it looks like the magic dagger hits about as hard as one of my pellets. So it's not going to be an item that's like finishing off enemies with any real efficacy, but it is softening them up so that like if they only catch one pellet or whatever, they will die. Or if we partially wound them, it finishes off. I really like that ability. It kind of reminds me of, uh, what's his name from Guardians of the Galaxy, Mary Poppins. I, I forget his name, but anyways, it reminds me of that little arrow that he directs with his whistle. And so I like to imagine that we're whistling kind of like a Wild West tune right now. And it's flying all over the place, obliterating our enemies. Uh, increase your damage by 30% for one second after a reload. There's some more movement speed right there. Rapid fire. I'm curious how double shot's going to do. I think it actually literally just added one more pellet. I was hoping it would double the amount of pellets. It's kind of hard to say. I was, I was hoping it would discharge our gun twice, basically, for each click. So may, I may have nerfed, unfortunately. I, I may have just nerfed myself. But then again, you got to learn the meta at some point, and you got to figure out what everything does and how it interacts with various items. And so, like, when you first start out in Vampire Survivors, there's always going to be throwaway runs and stuff, too. We can get another projectile right there. It doubles your base projectiles. I feel like we're dumb if we don't go for that, right? Oh my god, we're firing so many bullets that deal like no damage, but I'm so happy about it. Like, I need something now that makes my gun shoot backwards as well as forwards at the same time. That's what we're missing right here. That's the missing piece. Like, I'm okay with having less damage uh, because the build seems to be coming together okay. I need to get that XP in the middle. I need to push it. Kill clip. Increased reload rate for every enemy killed. Bonus resets after reloading. Okay, that could stack nicely. That one gives me, like, reloads, though, for every lightning bolt that goes out. And so even if it doesn't proc altogether that often, just being able to fire my shotgun endlessly, even on, like, a 1-2 rotation, might actually turn out to be really, really good. There we go. Get up close to him. Give him a little bit of the damage right there. Let him feel it. I want my treasure chest, bro, and I'm going to get it. I bet you I'm going to get it. Reload faster, please. Thank you. Whew, got scared there for a second. Got a little bit nervous. Uh, fan fire. When your last ammo goes out, you get 10 additional bullets in a circle. Let me take some movement speed real fast because I know that that deer boss or whatever it is is coming, and I know that I'm going to need to move quickly to get out of the way of his charge. There's our first treasure chest. Let's see what free perk we get. Every fourth shot, you launch a fireball. That's good. That's fine. Acceptable. I will take it. Supplementary damage, I never turn down. Uh, we can get our walk speed faster. So our walk speed is while we're firing, I think, and while we're not firing is the other part. I am actually going to take that. It actually seems pretty good. Yeah, that's actually synced up my movement speed while shooting with my sprint speed while not shooting. That's really, really nice. I'll take that. That's actually going to help me put a lot of damage on that deer boss once he gets over here. Deer boss, I'm coming for that ass. All right. Oh, we got our free reload right there. Very nice. I'm going to go up and through the center and get all that. Your bullets have a 50% chance to inflict burn. Bullet damage and knockback, probably a good idea. Let's go with the bullet damage and knockback. Like, I'd like to be able to push enemies back since we're using, like, a pellet fan, basically. Uh, that'll allow us to push back entire, like, sectors of enemies, basically. Like, entire quarters. There we go. Perfect. Ooh, we got the proc twice right there in a row. Very good. Yeah, I think this build is working. I, I think this build is really coming together. There's another level up real fast. Let's get kill clip it now. We already looked at that one. Split fire, shoot an additional bullet behind you. Yup. 
That's what I want. Just something to clear out my booty hole of hostiles. You know, I'm still going to be aiming to the front, but anything that we hit, anything that increases my bullet volume, I'm okay with. How much does that bullet hit for? Six? So it hits for as much as a pellet? Okay. That's not quite as good then. I think that's probably... Oh, there he is. There he is. There he is. He's trotting it on out, dude. He's ready for us. It's okay. We're going to get the dub on this one. I'm calling it right now. We got the dub. We got the dub. We got the dub. All right. Get in there. I would like a health meter on the boss mobs so that you can see how wounded and busted up they are. Oh, you lose health by touching the boundary. Oh, I figured it would just be like an invisible wall that... Okay, all right, yeah. Maybe I spoke too soon. I'm gonna go ahead and get a little gap right here. Actually, is the arena getting smaller? It may be. Um, let's go for big shot bullet damage, bullet size, fire rate down, electro bug, increase burn damage. Let's go fan fire. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, I like the sound effect on that. That's satisfying. I think the key with the big deer guy is just not to get greedy. I think that's what it comes down to. It's like you gotta, like, kind of bait the charge. Oh, we might not make it right here. Oh, cool! It actually, apparently the arena actively adjusts in size, like, as you're playing. Okay, fair enough. I don't know if we're gonna get him. I don't know if our damage is spicy enough. Like, I hope it will one day become spicy enough. There it is. It was spicy. Oh, we got a book. So what are these, like, super upgrades? So bullet damage, bullet size, piercing, fire rate, max HP, tome of rage, fire rate up, max ammo to 99, spread, bullet damage down 66%, no knockback, tome of summoning, Tome, so summon damage is up by 50%. Summon attack speed. Okay, and then our reload goes down by a lot. Okay. I'll probably go Tome of Power, I guess. Like, I don't know. I think we could have skipped that, but I want to play around with the utilities that we're getting me because I'm actually pretty happy with the way that this game uses kind of the same ideas from its predecessors, but has a totally different list of things that are unique to play around with. I like it. Uh, I think that's really, really good. I will take... I'm gonna take rapid fire to kind of cancel out like that minus 95% that we just took or whatever, like or that minus 50% or whatever that we just took on our firing speed. I feel like that's a good place to start. I mean, we're kind of getting it right now, man. I don't feel particularly threatened right now. Like, I don't want to jinx it, and I can't actively knock on wood because I've got hand on mouse, but you know. Okay. All right. Oh, I almost killed myself right there. That would have been really, really bad. Let's take the Holy Shield real quick, because it'll save us from two hits with the time we have left. Oh, there's eyeballs now. Sort of like Castlevania-style flying eyeballs. Okay. They seem to be a little bit chonkier, too. I guess you could call them Terraria eyeballs, too. I guess there's lots of games that have those Castlevania-inspired eyeballs. Yeah, I'd rather not get hit by your bullet right now if I can help it. I think, like, doubling our summon damage might not be a bad idea, too, like, in the near future. Like, I feel like our knife has not matured along with us. I thought I got hit right there. I'll be honest with you. Oh, I can increase my max ammo by one again. Summon damage up by 40%. Well, they gave me what I asked for. Oh, my bullets can bounce? I don't know if they have the range to really make that effective. I think I'll go with the light bullets. I just, I like the idea of having one extra in the chamber. I need to stop paying attention to the ones that are shooting bullets. And I need to start paying attention to the ones that are trying to box me in. I'm glad we took that knockback earlier. It looks like the intensity is beginning to increase. Luckily, my shotgun is knocking kind of like a void into them. 
which I can then like pass through. So like we're creating our own little channel of escape. However, if the projectiles start flying, that strategy is not going to work. Yep, the game definitely allows you to get kind of OP and awesome, which is good. Because that's kind of like the fundamental hallmark of these sorts of, you know, vampire, magic, survival, dynasty warriors inspired, endless hordes of enemies slash your way through them all. That's kind of a hallmark of the genre. Like, you kind of got to have that. Call down lightning to strike a random nearby enemy for 22 damage every second while the holy shield is active. So not only are there mods to the individual abilities themselves, it looks like there's kind of like Hades-style duo crossovers that happen in between the abilities too. Love it! Well done. Well done, developers. I keep wondering if like they're going to have a feature that I've thought of in my head but haven't brought up yet because I'm waiting to see if it happens. And then they keep meeting my expectations. Right now, developer, you are a killing it, my friend. You have basically knocked out every expectation that I've had so far. And so very, very well done. We've got one minute left to survive this thing. Yeah, let's just keep hacking through them, man. If I can get another level, that's chill. If I don't, I don't really care. Summon a magic scythe. Yeah, let's do that. Do I get that in addition to my knife? Oh, I do. Cool. So I've just got like a full-on poltergeist thing happening right now. Man, we are cutting swaths through these boys. Okay. I think I think we've got this if I just don't horribly mess it up. Like as, I, as long as I don't slip and trip, I think we're out of here. Uh, let's go ahead and we will take... Ghost Friend. I believe that Ghost Friend deserves to share this victory with us. And frankly, I feel sad because he's dead already. You know what I mean? He's like my little Casper the Ghost Buddy. Okay, I was planning on playing this for like 15 minutes because the game is only 10 minutes long, but I guess I'm not going to get to do that. Apparently, it's been almost 30 minutes now, so obviously I enjoyed the game. Uh, this right here is the demo for 20 minutes till dawn, aka 10 minutes till dawn. Go check it out. Go wishlist it. I think this one is on a good path. The gameplay feels very solid and all their fundamentals are locked in. Uh, they've had a weather eye out for all of the things that seem to make a game like this satisfying and they've already got them implemented in demo form. Uh, it's very, very badass. I enjoyed my time with it and I'm looking forward to the final release product. If we get more maps, we get more enemies, more set dressing and all that kind of stuff, like more environmentals. I think we'll be good to go. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we had 10 minutes till dawn. The demo for 20 minutes till dawn. I will see you all later. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for granting me the luxury of your attention. Hopefully I earned it, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye, everybody.